it might be that free will or the absence of free will is what determines a person's maybe call it genetic propensity to change habits or form habits. There may be some people for whom that is easier than others, but that's probably a spectrum. And it doesn't mm -hmm. imply that a person who struggles with a given behavior can't learn to master it. Uh, just as a, you know, so, so again, using an example, um, I'll never be a Michael Phelps, like ever, right? There was no, there was no scenario under which I was going to be as good a swimmer as Michael Phelps. So even if he hadn't started swimming till he was 15 and my parents threw me in the water at two, I was never going to be that good, but it doesn't mean I couldn't learn to swim. Sure. Uh, and similarly, had he never been thrown in the pool, we would never have heard his name. So, uh, I, I guess that's how I kind of rationalize it, which is there are going mm -hmm. to be people for whom it is easier to go through the exercises that we're going to talk about. And there are people for whom that's just going to be more difficult. And in the end, you're sort you can't change that part of it. That's the part I guess that is sort of set. Yeah. And I, a couple thoughts to add on to that. So, um, I thought of this when you, you first brought this up a few minutes ago, I don't know if you're familiar with David Epstein, his very much yeah. sports gene and range and so on. So David's great and a good friend of mine, a really nice guy. Um, and just very thoughtful with the way he puts arguments together, which I always appreciate. Um, and I was having a conversation with him about some of this stuff. And, uh, he said, one of the things that surprised him when he was researching the sports gene is that characteristics that he thought would be um, uh, mostly genetic, like, you know, strength and speed and things like that, turned out to be heavily influenced by training and choice and a lot of other stuff. And qualities that he thought would be a choice, like uh, grit and perseverance and um, uh, desire to train, turned out to have a much higher genetic component than he realized. I always love the example. There's, I think this is in sports gene. He talks about Steffi Graf just happened to be in a tennis study when she was young. She was like 14 or something. And she was part of this cohort of young Germans that were, you know, being studied. And she not only tested the highest for physical abilities like strength and speed and quickness and so on, but also tested the highest for competitiveness and desire to train and all these other things. And you just, I just love when combinations like that come together. Like think about how pointless this is to compete against her. Not only is she better than you, she also wants it more. Um, and so I do think that there's a heavy genetic component to some of the mental characteristics that would make you um, more likely to train some of these aspects or more interested in some things than others. Um, to your point about Phelps and you know whether he had ever been dropped in the pool or not, that I think is a, um, on the surface, it seems like something that would make you less motivated. It would, you would say, oh, well, why even try? I'm never going to be Michael Phelps. Or if genes play such a large role, what's the point? But I actually think that's the wrong lesson to take away. Um, the primary lesson I think is that genes don't, um, they don't tell you not to work hard. They tell you where to work hard or they don't tell you not to have a strategy, they just inform your strategy. This is another line that David told me in a conversation once where he said, um, I was saying, you know, a lot of people talk about grit and perseverance and discipline, but what if that is just your natural propensity based on the thing that you're working on? Like what, you know, what if I just happen to look kind of gritty uh, in my terms of, um, you know, weight training or uh, working at writing a book compared to the average person? but I just look that way because I happen to like those things. And um, he said, yeah, there's this whole line of thinking that like grit is fit. And so actually the way to increase your perseverance and discipline is to find areas or categories or skills where you're highly interested in them. You know, it's very hard to beat the person who's having fun because they're gonna want to keep working longer than the person who's suffering. So. Grit is fit, I think, is one way in which you can maybe try to stack the deck or stack the odds in your favor and get your genes aligned with the things that you're working on. And then, you know, there are going to be things like, you know, Michael Phelps in a pool where you're like, listen, this body was just designed to do this thing. You know, it's, it's very hard to find somebody who's more optimally designed to move through the water than him. And not all of us are going to have the good fortune of discovering whatever that thing is for us in our lives at age four or six or whatever. But 
I don't think that that means you should stop searching. Um, this is one of the benefits of trial and error. You know, the person who is curious and willing to explore a lot of things is more likely to come across an area where they are fascinated or they are interested. And it also is a really good fit for their natural abilities or propensities or whatever. And, um, that's kind of the primary lesson that I take away from the genetic side of things is, you know, similar to what you said, anybody can improve. Doesn't mean anybody can be Michael Phelps, but you can always improve your ability. And let's try to find that thing that I'm fascinated with, that I'm interested in. So where it doesn't feel like I'm suffering in the same way that other people are when they're trying this thing. And uh, you often be surprised how far you can go uh, and how willing you are to build habits and improve skills if you find some of those things that you're truly fascinated by. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.